Everybody. Welcome back to a new episode of Gordon's Garage. Um, so on this episode, it's going to be about building a, a place I can put a V8 motor and run it. Um, typical engine stands are really not designed for that. Um, so that's the main reason I bought this really heavy duty engine stand. Um, I've got one problem with this engine stand is the direction these two are facing out away from each other makes it really hard for a cherry picker to get in there and put this engine onto this engine stand without it falling over. Um, I've, I've been able to do it and it's sketchy at best. So I know you can look up a whole bunch of videos out there of people doing this kind of stuff and, and having problems with this particular engine stands. Uh, and if you're not familiar, the other types of engine stand just has a center, um, but it's like a tripod, not the big, yeah. Um, but the reason I bought this engine stand is I wanted to make a, a place where I can put a motor and run it. So what I'm looking at here is I'm gonna have to redesign a little bit. I'm gonna have to make these straight. Uh, they gotta be parallel to each other um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is going narrow the, these two wheels out here on the outside. This one and that one will be closer together, gets further into the uh, cherry picker. And uh, two, you want to stabilize the front half of the engine. And that means the motor mounts need something to bolt to. And so it's really hard <laughs> with a lot, it's going to take a lot more geometry if these are not parallel. So I'm going to cut them right about here and I'm going to take a slice of pie out of them and bring them in and make them parallel. They're going to be about two foot apart, um, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, two foot seems to be a magic number because I have a radiator and all this other stuff that's got to go with it. So to run an engine, you're going to have to have fuel, you're going to have to have battery, you're going to have to have a radiator, and all that stuff has got to get mounted right out here in space somewhere. And you're going to want a dashboard with some gauges. And when you build your own, the beauty of it is you get to decide what gauges, you get to decide how it's situated and all that stuff. Um, so there's a few different engines that I'm going to be putting on here. And I've got to take into account that uh, inline six engine has a much longer block than your 350 Chevy. Um, so it needs to be able to go in and bolt in or come out a little further for the longer engines and so on. So I'm trying to make this to where it works with multiple things like that. It's getting complicated quick. Um, I think I'm just thinking too much into it. Maybe I just need to build it and just go with it. Um, yeah, so first things first, I got to get those legs taken off there and I got to cut them and see if I can't get them straightened up. Okay, through the uh, magic time travel of cinematography, I've gotten you to the point where I've got these welded, ground down a bit, and really square. It might not look square to the camera, but it is square. I've used my little framing square and I've measured three different diff directions. It's good, it's really, really good. Um, not that these uh, engine stands are precise, they are kind of just generically there, but it does look like it's unsquare on camera, but it is not. And that's where that sits. Now you can see where the chain is and the carburetor will be a little further back than that. So this still could go up in there much further and it would be much helpful. Um, so, 
one of the things you'll probably think of is, why don't you move this out? Well, that is the manufactured hole. This is supposed to be on this bolt now. I'm already past that. I drilled a second hole this far back just to give me that much more room out. I'm already pushing the limits here. Um, the other thing I did was I had to cut off the wheels and line them up because now they're going to be crooked if I kept them at the angle they were. And they go just underneath the square tubing of the uh, cherry picker. So that's good. That's good. So that got me to there. So I can probably get the engine on there okay. It's not going to be too hard. Um, anyways, uh, the goal is to make an engine run stand. And I've still got a whole bunch of bracketry to go uh, to build onto the front end of this engine stand. So there you have it. I imagine myself taking and somehow welding in the square tubing I need that's going to go into the end of both of those. And I'm going to be able to just to wheel with those blue caster wheels I got right there on the floor. I'm going to be able to wheel this radiator and dashboard combo with a battery in the base to, right up to the front of this, put in a couple of set pins, and then I can plumb up the radio, all the electric I need, and then be able to kind of run it from there. I've got some other things I'd like to add to that dashboard. If there's something out there that you think that needs to be on one of those that are really important, um, yeah, I'd like to see that. Uh, one thing I'm thinking of is a throttle lever. I'd like to have something so I can watch the tack, watch the O2 sensor as I throttle it because it kind of tells you a lot about the carburetor. Um, the other thing I've done is, if you've seen in the background, I've built me a little stand to put underneath my V8 motors little caster wheels. I think I need to add something to keep the base from squeezing together or splitting apart when the engine sits down on it. I don't think it's quite strong enough to go just like that. It could, I bet, without the caster wheels, but for those caster wheels, I bet I need something on there to keep them going. And uh, so that one's for a Chevy. I built another one for a Ford, um, and I put those pneumatic tires on it so that it would, uh, go in and out of dirt because cherry pickers and these these steel wheels they don't like the dirt at all um so yeah that's where i'm at i'm gonna cut it loose for today i'm gonna go home we're gonna go watch spider-man that's gonna be cool and then um i'm gonna get back at it tomorrow let's start building that stand So I have all these holes drilled for my gauges, uh, even got my ignition switch thing there. I'm going to have to take the grinder, smooth off any rough edges I got kind of cut in there. Um, the next thing is my switches. I need to find a, a location for every switch I need. And before I drill these holes, I'm going to show you one other thing I picked up. So these are relays and they have a built-in fuse. That was really cool. And any of y'all know what the purpose of a relay is, y'all know this is, you know, we're basically building a, a temporary car and uh, there's no reason to create more issues or maybe a problem or two if I uh, don't use a relay. I don't want nothing sparking and electrocute, it's shocking me while I'm on the board here. So we're gonna run this. Um, I just threw that down. So it's real cool, you got a relay you got these two little wires that run to my switch. Um, I'm going to be disconnecting and connecting this ground wire. Uh, so what happens is this creates a magnetic pull, which creates a switch in here, which runs electricity straight through these two wires. So it'll go straight to the motor. And that's where my little uh, fuse is going to come into play. You could tell it's on the red wire here coming in.
Now that I've got it semi set up here, I'm going to take it all back apart again. But until then, I needed to find out where I'm going to put everything uh, as in the words up here. Um, so yes, I've got my key switch and it's just like a regular run of the mill. You have your accessory right there and off, on, and then it's spring loaded start. So yeah, um, that's typical. Um, so I'm going to put like my electric fans here, my fuel pump here, uh, maybe electric choke. I don't know. This is kind of just an extra one. Same with this one. It's just an extra, uh, but this one here, uh, kind of special. It's got a, it's on, it's off in the middle and it's on again. And I had this idea about, um, some kind of coolant tank to kind of pump it around. I'll explain that here in a little bit. Um, this I picked up on eBay. It's an old boat uh, throttle, and it's very complicated inside. Um, throwing you a little clip right here, kind of what the inside is doing and how it's, how it's going to work. I modified it a lot. It didn't come like that, um, but that's the uh, way it's going to work for me. Um, so this is the other end of the red cable right here, and as I throttle... So for the coolant in, out, and off, um, if I get a hold of two 12-volt pumps, which are very common, especially in boats because they have a bilge pump, and uh, if I get this radiator mounted on the framework here and there, um, I'm thinking about getting two round tanks, one on each side, and plumb it all up to where I have a pipe with a T with a port coming out here that attaches to a pump so I can pump the coolant out of the motor and the radiator over to one of those side tanks or both so they're they'd be connected um, and then when I'm ready to pump it fill it up so I can run an engine I can put another T in up here and run a pump to pump all of the fluid into the system um, this is going to save me basically not much other than the ability to have to get buckets and spill the stuff everywhere. So now that I think twice about it, maybe it's going to be very useful. But um, that's the idea is to plumb in a T-section so I can insert or pump in uh, coolant into the system to fill the radiator and the engine and then have a T-section down here to pump it out back into these containers that would sit on either side of this bracket that's going to hold the radiator where the dashboard's going to sit above it. Whoo wee Okay, so I did a bunch of welding um, and I kind of got in a hurry, so I got it a little unsquare, but that's okay. Um, looking at the radiator, it's in there just mocked up with some baling wire. I'm going to have to put in a couple of L brackets or something to, uh, yeah, attach it there on each side. And you can see how close the fill neck is and how close it is to, yeah, right in there. Um, yeah, I've got the dashboard up there and I've also got this extra panel. This is going to house all of my breakers, my relays, and all that's going to be on the back side of that. And perfect amount of room to put both my electric fans in there. Now, this is a little tall, but it kind of has to be because I need the top of the radiator to be about the top of the engine so I don't have a big air pocket in the engine and the engine get hot on me. Um, so that, that kind of needs to be as high as possible. I can't get much higher than that. And you can see now how all I have to do is drill in a couple of holes right there and right there, and I will be able to uh, insert those in further and lock it in or keep it out that far. You see where I got my battery? I'm just kind of mocking those up, see if that's where I like them. Uh, I think I need a bigger gas can. I just don't like the one gallon thing. I've got a little bit bigger one, and I want to try to put it down in there, but it, it's too big for that. So. Too small, too big, I need uh, one right in the middle. Okay, so the back of the engine's gonna be here, and um, yeah, the front of the engine's gonna be around here. 
So right about in this area right here is where the motor mount's going to be. And I'm going to need to make something to sit over this, saddle it. And it needs to go deeper than the bottom so I can put a bolt through it and cinch it together and have it clamp on and hold on tight to this. Um, got me a couple pieces of metal here to kind of get you the visual of telescoping in and out. Um, yeah, so if you have a motor mount here in space, you, you're going to have this thing is going to lean in just a little bit. I don't know exactly what angle that's going to be, so I need a lot of uh, ways of adjusting or configuring to different types of engine mounts. So yeah, so I'm definitely going to need a pivot pin down here, some type of bolt, and it could go back and forth this way to wherever, how far in it needs to be for whatever engine. It needs to telescope down and up depending on how high it needs to go. And then again here, it needs another wrist pin type bolt that it can tilt into whatever angle the edge of the block is, attached to the block, and then secure down tight. Um, also, I'd like to drill a hole in this outer sleeve, weld a nut on it, and run me a bolt in so I can get it to where it needs to be and lock it down. Hey, uh, while you're there, go ahead and hit that uh, like and subscribe button. That notification bell wouldn't hurt you either. Well, I'm putting some color on this stuff. Uh, there's only one other thing I did prior to this was uh, some four little tabs right here and here to hold that radiator on. It's going to be real nice. And uh, yeah, I just got to spray some paint on this so it's all one color. Next step is uh, these two panels I have here. I need them to be um, painted. Uh, I also need to do one other thing. I need to make a template of how this all lays out. Mm -hmm. And um, especially on the switch here, I've got several different angles of where the key's gonna be. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this probably black. And then, I don't know, maybe uh, orange or maybe a yellow, a another um, contrasting color. I'm going to make a decal that's going to lay over this and it's going to label each one of these and tell me where everything's at and that's going to be my little letters yeah so gotta get all this off so i've got my dash panel there nice and painted up i've got the accessory panel painted up and hanging and yeah i got myself a battery tray stuck down in there Wow, this is gonna be a full video, I guess. Uh, I had to design, kind of draw out and cut and grind and weld and grind some more because my welds suck. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, paint it all up, make it pr pretty and uh, put it back together. So uh, battery tray got in, thinking about buying two more of those. That'd be cool to hold little stuff here and there, back there up here. Um, I gotta clean up my radiator. It's sad, it needs help. Um, and also need to do some uh, vinyl. We're gonna do that. All this is gonna probably happen in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just gonna let this sit here and dry because it's like 30 degrees out and it's gonna take 200 days for that to finally dry. With that said, y'all have a good weekend.